Attorney Maureen Murphy on the program today, and uh, I'm going to uh, let Maureen tell us about herself, but I must say the occasion for her appearance on the program is that she will be participating in a day of debate, which is tomorrow, part of the International Festival of Arts and Ideas in New Haven, and uh, that's also the last day of the festival. It's been a marvelous uh, two weeks there. Uh, you uh, tell us something about what you're going to do tomorrow on the day of debate and also something about your uh, private law practice in New Haven, Maureen. Okay. Um, well, first let me tell you about my practice because I think that's a good segue into why I'm debating tomorrow. Um, I am with the firm of Murphy, Murphy & Nugent. It's a firm in New Haven. I'm also vice president of an organization called Love Makes a Family, which is a statewide coalition that is working to seek equality in marriage. My practice is, uh, focuses on family law and civil rights, and I have for a very long time been working with the gay and lesbian community and representing them on numerous issues regarding civil rights. And I have focused very much on expanding the court's recognition of family to include the gay and lesbian community and their families. For the last 10 years, I've been speaking publicly on the right to equality to marriage for same-sex couples. And that is indeed going to be the uh, focus of the debate tomorrow. Mm -hmm. One of the debaters? I am one of the debaters. Um, I believe that uh, the on the opposite side of this issue will be Brian Brown from the Connecticut Family Institute. No kidding. Because we uh, had a debate on our campus last spring on this very issue, same-sex marriage, and it was Brian Brown versus Mike Lawler, I'm sure you know. I do know Mike Where, very well. In fact, I think uh, I just saw him going well, yes, into one of the buildings. He is a faculty member on our campus. That's he's right. a professor in our criminal justice program here, and he's a uh, state uh, representative in right. the uh, state legislature. Uh, he's also been rather outspoken about the Roland situation that, that's late. Right. Uh, he was on the uh, the impeachment uh, committee there to consider whether Roland should be impeached, but now, of course, this is a moot issue. But it is certainly not a moot issue whether same-sex marriage will be... What do you think the prospects are, Maureen? Well, I think that the prospects are excellent. Um, I think that the time, the timing is really the issue. Uh, most polls will show that, that an overwhelming majority of the population of the United States believe that in their lifetime, same-sex couples will be able to be married just like their heterosexual counterparts. Um, as you all know, that on May 17th, which I believe not coincidentally was the 50th anniversary of Brown versus Board of Education, the same-sex couples were allowed to get married in Massachusetts, and that is the first state in this country that has allowed same-sex couples to get married. Mm -hmm. I think as time passes and we realize that the community at large in the United States realizes that same-sex couples have the same desires and the same interests in wanting to be married and wanting to have uh, recognized and given the same benefits and responsibilities as their heterosexual counterparts, that the sky is not going to fall because same-sex couples get married. And um, I'm, Connecticut has been a very good place, in large part because of Michael Lawler, who has been a wonderful proponent of equality on a number of issues, but particularly for the gay and lesbian community, um, that I believe that our legislature may in fact be one of the first legislatures, if not the first, to recognize the rights of same-sex couples. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, in Massachusetts, didn't their legislature uh, vote uh, in favor of a, consti a Massachusetts constitutional amendment to define marriage as strictly a heterosexual type relationship? That, that is true. They did take the first step. Um, yeah, and I'm sure, since the two of you are the professors, that <laughs> you, you followed this rather closely and uh, that they had a very difficult time passing that. And it is, a, even though they were able to pass it by a very, very slim majority, and it took them quite some time, a, a period of over a month, to get that uh, resolution passed, that it will not go before the voters 
until 2006, and that's only if they are able to pass next year the exact same resolution. Mm -hmm. So the, the state of Massachusetts has a very difficult time, I believe, overcoming uh, what they have to overcome, which is to say that all of these couples who have been married, and I believe that yeah, the number is will have been by that time. Exactly. Yeah. I believe that in the first week there were something like 2,700 couples mm -hmm. who got married in Massachusetts. Would so these be primarily or even exclusively Massachusetts residents or people from elsewhere as well? Um, well, that's that's a really good point that you brought that up. Because, Can they be from any state? Well, uh, right now that there was a lawsuit a week ago yesterday um, on behalf of, I believe, five municipalities in Massachusetts and on behalf of eight couples from outside of Massachusetts suing Governor Mitt Romney for trying to uh, keep out-of-state residents from getting married. And he was basing that on a 1913 law that was established to prevent interracial marriages uh, from outside of the state of Massachusetts coming in. That, that statute has never been enforced and never been relied upon for anything before. But that's not the entire answer to your question because a number of, of out-of-staters can get married in Massachusetts if they are also residents of Massachusetts. So we went to Florida. My wife and I got married in Florida. So it's, you just have to have the follow the state laws in the sense of maybe three-day waiting period or have certain tests or whatever. And, I don't, is that, was that over, that isn't true in Massachusetts then you're saying? Uh, he has said it is not true and oh, okay. he has required that, um, that applicants for the marriage license for the first time in the history of mm. Massachusetts that they indicate that they are either residents of Massachusetts, own property in Massachusetts, or intend to become residents of Massachusetts. For everyone. So everyone has to do that in Massachusetts. Everyone has to do All right, that. let me ask you a couple of questions. One is, is, are there any countries in the world that allow legally gay marriage? Any nation, states, any yes. today? Yes. There are a number of countries other than Canada that have marriage for same-sex couples, but in each of those instances there is something that they, that they don't have that, is, that it makes it the same as like what countries would you mean, be? Might, we might call it civil union as opposed to marriage? Well, actually, what? they refer to it as marriage. Oh. But, for instance, in the Netherlands, um, same-sex couples cannot adopt. Hmm. They have all the other rights of marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what's important is, is that while legislatively in many countries there has been an that that same-sex couples deserve the, the same rights as, as heterosexual couples, that the only country that has really done that is Canada, and it was by the courts. And we have found that true in the oh, struggle here courts. in the United States, that while public opinion has changed dramatically, uh, often, as we saw in many other uh, civil rights struggles, public opinion lags behind recognition by the courts in our United States and state constitutions as to what are civil rights. And then in turn, legislative action That's based correct. on public opinion. That's correct. Opinion. I mean, few people pay attention to this, but I think it is noteworthy that I believe it was 2000 or 2001, the state of Alabama had a prohibition in its constitution for on interracial marriage. And even though that was an unconstitutional provision, they did not have the votes to repeal um, it. You mean on U.S. constitutional or on Alabama Unconsti constitution? Unconstitutional by the U.S. constitution. Mm -hmm. But the state constitution still had that provision <laughs> in it. So I, I think that, uh, that often we're unaware of how public opinion has lagged far, far behind uh, what the courts have have seen as the civil rights of the public. The courts have uh, implemented ideas that the public or the, the demos would not have wanted and that the courts have been manipulated by a cabal of people that uh, are, in, you know, are using the courts to gain political power. That has <laughs> always been the complaint, and, right. but that is why we had a Bill of Rights because exactly. although we have a, a constitution sure. that protects the people and, and 
makes it power to the majority, there was a recognition by our forefathers that minorities need to have some protection, and they chose what those protections should be. And uh, that is why the Civil Rights Movement was so successful, because there was a recognition that our forefathers intended rights to be protected, even if you were a minority. This is the professors on WNHU West Haven, 88.7 FM. And your hosts are Professor David Morris and Professor Joel Marks. And our guest today is Maureen Murphy, an attorney in New Haven, and a Murphy uh, Murphy and Nugent, and a <laughs> uh, debater in tomorrow's day of debate as part of the International Festival of Arts and Ideas in New Haven. Do you know what time your it's event three, is? Yes, I'm sorry. It's 3:45 to 4:45. Okay, but there will be uh, uh, the whole afternoon, I guess, is That's a, a correct. series of debates. Is this at the Educational Center for the Arts? That's correct. On the corner Auburn. of Audubon and Orange Streets in New Haven. And uh, $5 probably gets a person into the whole day, right? I think that's right. Yeah. Let's assume that the people that are against this do not, are, are let's say, decent human beings, all right? What would be their argument, or what would be their fears, or what would be the reasons why they would take that position? Do you have any ideas about their, you know, I mean, what would be their, what are they worried about? In fact, we debated this in West Hartford um, uh, just on Wednesday. And so there are many debates going on, and I think that there are many good and thoughtful people on the other side. And I believe that they're, that they're very concerned and that they are misinformed about a lot of, the facts on this issue. That they would say, oh my God, this can't go through because one, two, three, uh, that kind of thing I'd be interested in. There is a real concern that this will lead to the breakdown of the American family and that the American family has been under siege for a very long time. Is there any evidence that this type of uh, openness in any society has led to a breakdown of the fabric of uh, society? I think that um, what, what we do know is that same-sex families exist. In, in the year 2000, Forever. in the year 2000, the Connecticut legislature, uh, in, in large part again by Michael Lawler's sponsorship, uh, passed a, a law that allowed same-sex couples to adopt. Time, I have done over 100 adoptions for same-sex couples. Same-sex families exist, and they have the same needs and the same desires to take care of their families and have protections for their families as do other families. No, we're not disagreeing. What is the reason why they think that uh, that if they open this, why do the heterosexual uh, constituency, <laughs> well, constituency think that, the, that uh, if they let same-sex couples marry and have children that this will break down the fabric of the society? <laughs> One thing that just came to mind, I, I hadn't thought of it, is that Sodom and Gomorrah in the Bible supposedly was this kind of society, right? And the, that God brought his ret retribution against Sodom and Gomorrah because of this kind of philosophy of that society? Is, it, is that one of the words? What, what I sincerely believe is that, that at the core of this debate is whether homosexuality is acceptable, whether homosexual relations are accepted, uh, and whether homosexuals have the same right to protection as their heterosexual counterparts. And that's really the core of it. If you believe that homosexuality is wrong and abhorrent and should not be uh, in any way given protection, that it should be eradicated, then you will be very opposed to any, uh, any support for those families. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I do think there is uh, that agenda because if you think about the people who oppose same-sex marriage, they're probably the same people who would oppose sex outside of marriage. And so if they're forcing homosexuals into a position where they cannot be married, then the next step would be to say, well, then you shouldn't be having sex, period. In other words, get rid of homosexuality. Well, there were laws. The, the next exactly step right, might be, Joel. you know, well, that, we, we tell the truth on this program. I think that, that's exactly right, though, that, that often that is not what we're hearing. Right. We're not hearing that homosexuality right. is abhorrent. Right. Right. But, but my, what I am saying, and I truly believe this, that if you believe that people should have the right to engage in this behavior, 
then you won't have a problem seeing yeah. them yeah. be married That's and be true. given all the right. rights. Let, let, let's do a little practice for your debate tomorrow. Okay. Because as they say, we did have uh, Brian Brown That's here. Right. And he, so you know. Yes, and one of, he, he had an argument uh, when he was debating Mike Lawler, which did, uh, which did give me pause, all right? Uh, because Mike Lawler was saying, uh, well, and uh, uh, just given the name of the organization that you are affiliated with, Love Makes a Family, right? Mike Lawler was saying, well, love makes a marriage. Uh, and Brian Brown's very simple response to that was, well, if love makes a marriage, then is it okay to have polygamy? Is it okay to have incestuous marriage? And he didn't talk about bestiality, but that would be the next one. You know, you love your animal, your animal loves you. Uh, so what response would you make to that kind of argument? Uh, that, when you asked for my list, that, that was going to be my, my next. Right. That was going to be my next uh, comment. We do hear this polygamy all the time, and and I, I I have two responses. And so my first response is is that if you look back at um, at the interracial marriage ban in 1948, the state of California was the first state to uh, to say it was unconstitutional the ban on interracial marriage, which, which by my observation, your marriage would have been banned hmm. in yeah, the state oh, yeah, of California. Of course, of course. David and, and Dan Wu. Yeah, of course. Yes. Yes, and, and so I think it's, uh, it's... As a matter of fact, I think that the uh, end on marriage to Asians was uh, in place. Marriage between uh, blacks and whites. And, and I think that I in think 1945, I'm... the state of California, by Earl Warren, who, late, who was the governor at that time, later became the Chief, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court and felt very differently, I am sure. He was the one who added Malay to the group of, of, of couples that could not be married. They're the group of individuals. So a lot of people don't know that. But in 1948, when the state of California um, overturned their ban on interracial marriage, they, at that time, the opponents argued that if you lifted that ban on interracial marriage, it would lead to polygamy. <laughs> and and they, they used the same arguments in 1967 when the state of Virginia, in Loving versus Virginia, when the United States Supreme Court looked at this issue and said that it was unconstitutional to prevent couples from getting married on the basis of their race. At that time, the Attorney General for the State of Calif for the state of Virginia argued, if you end this ban, then you will lead to incest, polygamy. This is the argument that is always positive. Okay, but what's the answer? What's the answer? <laughs> and, and the answer is, is that in the interracial marriage ban, that no one was seeking to include three, four, five people. In this particular instance, same-sex couples are not seeking to have three, four, five people get married. Well, but, but, yeah. but let me just finish, right. because, because that, was, that was posited 50 years ago. We have not seen a movement towards polygamy. And the, if there are people who want to have, if the polygamy movement wants to come forward and say, we think it's our part of our civil rights since you let same-sex couples get married, that now you should let us get married, you know what? They have the right to do that. And if they're successful, then they're successful. But that is not what this issue is about. Mm -hmm. And what it is is fear-mongering. It's saying if you allow same-sex couples to get married, if you allow interracial couples to get married, then every all hell is going to break loose, and that's fear-mongering. Yeah, well, that, I mean, I think you did give the answer there, because uh, there's a lot of question-baking going on with the, when the opposition gives their argument, because the presumption is, well, there's something terribly wrong with those other forms of marriage, but we have to look at it at a case-by-case -case basis, right? That's right. Uh, now, so, because somebody could have said in the, in the interracial case, that, oh my God, if we allow this, the next thing you know, there'll be homosexual marriage. That's exactly right. right. Well, so the answer to that would be, well, so what? You know, or let's look at that. That's let's right. think about that. Right. Would you say that Christianity, Judaism, and Islam would be generally, normatively opposed to homosexuality and same-sex marriage as a philosophy, as a religious philosophy? Um. Or one is or another isn't. There are religious 
groups within all of those that you have listed. I'm not sure about Islam that are Islam very. <laughs> With no authority, I say definitely. There, there See, are because if you, if you remember the, in Iraq, in that prison, they were trying to show homosexual relationships between the men, mm -hmm. so they could use those pictures to have them killed outside of, when they went back to their own group. So I think it's uh, definitely. And um, the Reform Judaism has mm -hmm. been very accepting of same-sex marriages and has performed religious same-sex marriages for quite some time. Mm -hmm. There are a number of Protestant groups what, that... Episcopals? I'm an Episcopalian. Do they do? Certain Episcopalians. We'll, we'll do it. Yeah, Catholicism would be against same-sex marriage absolutely. and homosexuality. Not against, in the sense, but they would not see that as the... They would see that as a deviation from the norms, right? That's correct. And Catholicism is what, uh, half the Christians in the United States are Roman Catholic, and uh, and you're saying the Orthodox Jews and the conservative Jews and the, and the Muslims would be against that. So that's a, a giant political force for any politician to face, even if they felt that it might be a, a, a reasonable action, you, you would probably wipe out your capabilities of having any constituency if you took the position against those big three religions. Well, there are also a number of, of legislators that are supportive of, as we call them, gay rights. Uh, and, and the polls that have been done about Connecticut show that there is an increasing number of people supporting marriage for same-sex couples. And some of the polls show it over 50 percent. Some of it show it just below 50 percent. So legislators, especially in Connecticut, are very clear that they do not want to um, take a position that is against a, a large number of people that feel that same-sex couples should be given this right and this benefit. What I'm saying is you've got a, a religious philosophy, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, major sections of those religious beliefs that have a different point of view. Now, to embrace a differing philosophy is a difficult thing for a follower of a philosophy, right? To, to, to modify your own philosophy is, is probably against human nature, because each philosophy wants to uh, combine and uh, codify their philosophy. So there's a resi resistance to this based on religious philosophy, if, if I may use that word. It's analogous to the choice issue. A lot of religious Correct. people, based on their belief systems are against abortion. And so there are a number of issues in which people have to dis decide what they really believe in their heart is right, and it may go against the religious teachings, yet they still uh, they still go to church, or in the mm. Catholic sense, they mm. still go to Mass. Um, and, and in fact, that has become more of an issue. Yeah, there was an article, uh, I get the um, Catholic uh, League's uh, emails and they said that a major Jewish newspaper attacked the Roman Church for their uh, doing this for uh, not allowing politicians that were pro-choice yeah. to take communion and the Catholic League came back saying this is no issue in the church is not to be criticized by another church's mm -hmm. points of view but if you take political philosophy or any philosophy people die to keep those philosophies intact. This is the problem. We're talking a philosophical thing. They die to keep their philosophies intact, and they kill to keep their philosophies intact. So what we're saying is, what we're, in essence we're saying is the Christians, the Jews, and the Muslims should modify their philosophy for the good of the greater society. But in the history of the world, people don't modify their, their philosophies for the history of good of, for the good of a society. They, they actually coalesce philosophies and, you, and, and actually use them as structures to go after other people. I'm just saying, what, uh, from a position of being a, let's say I'm a Catholic, I'm not a Catholic, I'm Episcopalian, but let's say I'm a Catholic and part of the doctrine of the church is you, you don't think that homosexuality or that same-sex marriages should be condoned. Now, what the other people are asking for is me to modify my beliefs, right? Isn't that what they're asking? They're saying, look, even though the Catholic Church says this, you think you're a Catholic, you should, in this particular case and some others, you should modify your belief. The, the Catholic Church does not believe in divorce. The Judaism well, does not believe in divorce. They believe you can get divorced. You're not divorced in the eyes of the church. You're not divorced in the eyes of the church. So they I actually have a really dual thing. Mm -hmm. So they're not against the concept of secular divorce, but they are against the... The church has a divorce system. I don't speak for the Catholic Church, but the church has a system within the church 
that you have to go through to get divorced in the eyes of the church, exactly. not in secular systems. The What I have in front of me that you can't see, the, the yes, listeners, yeah, is about, yeah, I don't know, what would you say? Uh, uh, um, over a foot tall. That's over a foot tall. This is one set of the Connecticut General Statutes. There are 588 Connecticut General Statutes in which marital status is a factor. Not included here are the 1,138 federal statutes. Those are those are government given. Now, what you're talking about is religion, and that the government has always had to maintain a separation of church and state. And in fact, both our state and federal constitution say that no religious no religious group shall be given preference. So we are not asking that the Catholics agree that we should be allowed to get married in their church. Mm. There is absolutely no basis for that. We do not want to intrude upon their religious beliefs. But this is a status that is conferred by the government, yeah. not by a religious organization. That perhaps the Catholics feel that this is an attack on their religion, whereas if they were told or was presented in the way of divorce, that you'd have a secular concept of divorce and then a, a Catholic concept of divorce and those were two different issues and two different courts of law or whatever you want to call it they might be able to you might be able to as a Roman Catholic or as a Jew or a, a Muslim to uh, embrace the idea of a secular belief system within a religious structure. Civil union is a term of art that that only exists in one state in the country and that is Vermont what you are talking about, and what I am talking about, I believe, is the civil right to marry. Now, you and your wife can go to a justice of the peace and get married. And the, as long as you've applied for the license and had the blood test and paid, I think, $25 in the state of Connecticut, you can get married. And yes. civil institution. You do not have to go through a religious right at all. However, that would not be recognized if you were Catholic. That would not be a recognized marriage. The Catholic right. Church is right. not going to recognize your civil marriage. Right. They will recognize your religious marriage. And so there right now are two different kinds of marriage. There's a religious marriage and there's a but civil marriage. It, so it's not just a Christian concept that the, that the uh, concept of civil marriage and religious marriage is, is different. We have a number of same-sex couples who are married religiously. Yeah, because the Reformed Judaism, right, um, right, yeah, absolutely. So they're married in the eyes of but their they religion. Were not right. In a civil yeah, marriage, even though they were married in a religious. Exactly. You're listening to the professors on WNHU West Haven, 88.7 FM. The professors are Dr. David Morris and Dr. Joel Marks, and our guest today is Attorney Maureen Murphy. Uh, practicing in New Haven and participating in the Day of Debates tomorrow as part of the International Festival of Arts and Ideas. This will be at uh, 345? That's correct. correct. In the uh, Educational Center for the Arts, and it will be a, on, on Audubon and Church Streets in New Haven, and the debate will be about same-sex marriage, although it will also be preceded by uh, several other debates all afternoon as part of the Day of Debates. Uh, now, regarding this issue of uh, civil union versus or vis-a-vis -vis marriage, uh, I had a little... Religious marriage, we thought. Well, right? no, marriage. marriage. Okay. marriage. I, I had a little thought about this, and I'm very eager to try this out on you, Maureen. Mm -hmm. What would you say about giving the religious institutions what they, some of the religious institutions claim they want, which is to say, let them have marriage, That's exactly and right. then yeah. just have civil union be the legal exactly. norm. So just take that, and instead that of having a double duty done by this word marriage, just give it to the church, the synagogue, the, you right. know, whatever, uh, and then everybody who now has some kind of a, a so-called uh, civil marriage, you know, henceforth this will be known as civil union. And then everybody's happy, including homosexuals who would like to have a religious marriage because they will certainly be able to find a church or synagogue, etc., which will perform a religious marriage for them also if they wish that. 
but the legal norm approved, endorsed by the government, would be something that we would distinguish from marriage, now understood as a religious notion, and it would then be called civil union. What about that? Um, a lot of people have talked about that, Joel, and, and conceptually it sounds great. I'm a philosopher. Of course, and conceptually <laughs> I think that, that what everyone would seek to do and feels like it would make everyone happy, although it wouldn't, and I'll get to why okay. it wouldn't. Yeah, that's what I want. But, but um, that if you had a purely uh, civil and Secular. government secular governmental institution and a purely religious right. institution and there was a great separation of those two that's just not the way it is well that's true it's and, not the way it and is and so what happens is is that when you say to a same sex couple why won't you be happy with that it's because that is not what we have Correct. Yeah. and so if if the government were willing to say we are going to absolutely erase mm -hmm. all of the statutes and all everything that exists in every state in the country and establish a purely secular institution that we are going to change the name of but that isn't going to happen and so well, lots of things people so say what, isn't going to happen well, like same-sex marriage for example but it is happening but, but, but here's here. it's called civil married in the Florida in the town. They got married, you just said. Yes. Yeah, but uh, I mean, we, you could call it civil well, marriage, saying, church, it religious about marriage. A name at this point. One of the things that I think is really important is that right now, that there is a civil institution called marriage. You mm -hmm. can say there's a parallel institution, or not even parallel, but right. there is an institution called religious marriage. Right. But right. there is right. a civil right. right. Okay, so why it is a fundamental it right. Civil marriage. If you call religious marriage, civil marriage. Or well, we'll call the civil marriage and we'll call the religious marriage. <laughs> I mean, just so we have different terms. But uh, you know what? That would be terrific. Is that there is a civil right? Our United States Supreme Court yeah, has right. said that there is a fundamental right to be married, and that has been reiterated over and over and over again. Because what you're they're against the about, concept of civil. Union, no, they're, they're not, not against the idea of civil marriage. Is the is this term that has been applied in one state yeah, which in, I don't, what is it? has uh -huh. not been recognized in the state of Connecticut. And that's a really okay, important point. What does point. it mean in Vermont civil union? What it means in Vermont, they tried to establish a separate but equal institution. Okay. What we learned in 1954 with Brown versus Board of Education that there is no such thing as separate but equal. Mm -hmm. Once you try right. to separate a group, you are really creating a second-class right, citizenship. Right. And so what they did in Vermont is they created a parallel system that has not been recognized in any other state in the United States. So even though, Joel, I wish we lived in the world that you're seeking, mm -hmm. that the, what, what the truth of the matter is is that right now there is a very important governmental right that, it, that the Supreme Court has said is a fundamental right, and that a number of our population, the residents of this state and the residents of the United States, are being denied access to that right. Mm. And they are being And the right meaning of religious marriage? Absolutely no, no. not. It no, has no. nothing no, no. to do no. with religion. You know what? No, okay, I, I see now where, where this civil union legislation falls short. To be yeah. complete and to the issue, it would have to provide that all those who have up until now and henceforth yes. you know been called married in the eyes of the state would from now on be called u civil union oh, no, but it's well, not it that should. difficult it no it's really not that difficult should. in russia or in many countries you have to get married civilly uh, whatever the i'm talking about within the state and then you can be married in the, well, the religious true. belief system. Sure. Yeah. No, but you don't no, have to be. It's just, it's you don't it's have to be true. married. But they're both, the called they're, married. they're both called marriage. They're both called marriage. That's exactly yeah, right. Isn't that curious? That's exactly right. right. But in a lot of countries, that's yeah. true. What, what would be the problem with a person in Russia saying, but a person in Russia or China or wherever that they had the idea, or the European Union, would they be against the idea that you could have a civil union and then if you wanted a religious union, you could do that also? 
Why wouldn't they rise up against it? It's a word that is in this foot tall stack of laws. Mm -hmm. So you would have to change that word. But I mean, that's not unprecedented. But it's all over the world. That I mean, there's that. certainly been precedents well, in legal history where a word or something had to be changed in mounds and mounds of documents, hasn't there? You're absolutely right. But here's the other problem is that, for instance, the state of Virginia has just passed a law that I believe the governor vetoed, but it was passed over his veto, that not only says that same-sex couples can never be married and that they won't recognize these marriages from other states, but also says that same-sex couples cannot be given anything that looks like mm, a marriage. Yeah. So, and that includes things like powers of attorney and benefits that are given yeah. to everybody. Yeah. So what I'm telling you is, is that yeah. it would be great if you believed that every person in the United States would have no problem with this happening. But I, I have to get back to this being an issue of civil rights. In 1958, 94% of the people in a Gallup poll, opposed interracial marriage. 1958, 94% of the population. So when people say, you know, we can fix this, we can make this its own institution, you're denying that there is a lot, a lot of people out there, for the reasons that you've already stated, for their religious beliefs or whatever, that believe that we should be denied the civil rights. That you're saying the Catholic Church would not allow in the United States the concept of a civil union? That's absolutely Just like right. they, but they allow the concept of a divorce, uh, even, civil no, divorce? Even, they do not allow it. They no, no. So I they really don't accept it within the church, but yeah. they do accept it in a larger society that it's there, right? They, they oppose it. We're not it called no, no, but it's Catholic. different. I mean, this has been made very clear. The Pope has said that there should not be any civil unions and that there should not oh, be okay. recognition of domestic partner benefits. Right. This has been very clear. Are you saying that the Catholic Church is against the concept of divorce outside of the church? They don't recognize it. So you can go and get divorced as a Catholic, but the Catholic Church does not recognize it. No, no, but I, it doesn't matter Catholic. If, you, if, I, if you're two Jewish people and you get divorced in, in a civil ceremony, does the Catholic Church recognize that you're divorced? No. You're not divorced if you're two Jewish people in a civil ceremony and get divorced? Well, or two uh, Episcopalians? Well, this is what I'm saying. It's not an issue. I mean, the, point is that the point is that the Catholic Church has authority in their mind over people who are Roman Catholic. That's correct. But they don't have authority over people who are not Roman Catholic. That's correct. Now, do they believe that? That's all I'm asking. Or do they think they have authority over people that are not Roman Catholic? If you're using the divorce issue... Well, homosexuals can be Catholic. In yeah. that case, if you're a Catholic homosexual, then the church would have authority over the concept of whether you could be married in the Catholic Church. But, but they could not have authority over the concept of civil marriage. When the Catholic, when the Pope takes the position that he's taking, he is not saying, I only want this concept to apply to the Catholic Church. What he's saying is that we have to work towards opposing the extension of rights and benefits to same-sex couples. And that, in, he opposed it in the city of New York, and that is not saying I'm only opposing it for my particular group. It's the same with a number of other Protestant religions that are opposed to this. They, they yeah. oppose it because they believe that it will lead to the downfall of society. All right, I mean, we're not saying it's absolutely 100% impossible. It is theoretically possible, right? Wouldn't you buy that? I mean, if you had a million examples and one of them comes well, out, then the religious groups are trying to impose their philosophies on followers of other religious groups or non-religious groups, which I don't That's think is... Why do I have to Imposed, check? okay. Imposed, now, I, I'm a philosopher, okay, uh, and, and I teach mainly ethics courses, right? And I have to say that I do believe in ethics and morality. I mean, it's kind of old-fashioned these days, and it tends to be associated in people's minds with religion. But I don't think of it that way at all. It seems to me there's just a, an aspect of the universe and certainly an aspect of human existence, which is quite objective, and it's known as morality. Now, of course, we don't necessarily know 
what's right and wrong, because people have different views of that, but you can certainly bring forward arguments, pro and con, just as you could about some issue in science. You know, we have various kinds of evidence, there are different sorts of evidence for moral issues, but it's still something that can be rationally discussed. And very often the Catholic Church or any other religious group will not simply say we oppose this for our own religious group you know, and or not simply say we oppose this because it violates uh, something in our holy scriptures, sometimes they will come out with just straightforward arguments. Uh, the way, for example, uh, Bishop Rosaza does uh, from time to time when he, he writes an op-ed for the newspaper. He just did one about uh, why it was wrong for the United States to wage war in Iraq. And he wasn't citing Holy Scripture. He was just giving the same kinds of arguments yeah. anybody else would if they were trying to defend a political or moral position. Absolutely. So when That's somebody comes forward with a... They do mean for it to apply to everyone. Absolutely. And it's perfectly fine if, Absolutely. They, if they feel I, that way. They have the right to do that. Yeah. I'm not denying it. I, what I was taking opposition to, David, no, 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 was your... It was your belief that, that it doesn't go outside of their own religious group. If you're up at the legislature on many issues, you're going to have the bishops' conference testify on many bills, and they have certainly testified. They testified against uh, the adoption for same-sex couples. They testified against uh, the marriage. Well, that's perfectly and, all right. Or any particular group can um, impose their philosophy on the larger group. Of the, of the lar Bringing forward arguments, right. and then there's public debate, and may the better arguments win. Well, this is not what you're saying, Maureen, right? You're saying that... You're saying <laughs> Making that, arguments? No, no, but you're not saying may the better argument win. You're saying may the the argument that I adhere to win. <laughs> well, I believe very strongly No, no, but I, I don't mean say. that your argument isn't good, but I'm saying that you believe your argument. Yeah. What do you mean? That? Don't you want sincerity when people argue? No, 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 it's not no, just a basic there, society. If you have two, two opposing philosophies, right? Yeah. And both people are arguing based on their philosophies. Can you say one argument is better than another? Well, they, but, you and maybe two oneself by what one hears well, the other person the say. Of but it's just a philosophical discourse if to you win certainly believe. To, if all you're concerned about is winning, winning an argument, argument, that's sophistry. But yes. that's not what this is. No, you have people who really believe how can their you position. Say that one argument is better than another. Well, your own sense of reason, David. No, no, but think about it. How can we say that? I do think I'm talking about and what I'm talking about. Yeah. What one of the things, and, and we got a little bit sidetracked on the religion. My position would be, if there is a religious position that is purely based on a religious teaching that goes contrary to a civil law, and that that law yeah. is established as a fundamental right, in my opinion, and it is only an opinion, that fundamental right has to win, because that is what our government is, is yeah. it, it centers around, a separation of church and state. Yeah but it may not have to win in another society Absolutely. that didn't have that fundamental s uh, right. belief system in place. That's right. And but so that would you go not, with that? I mean, that is not what our government is based on. No, I understand that. So based on the philosophy of secular, the difference between secular and religious beliefs, then our society is derived from that argument. So that could be seen as the, I don't want to say better argument, but the better argument in this society based on those belief systems. Yeah. Because if we have a fundamental right, a civil right, and there is not a rational reason for denying someone access to that civil right, other than a purely religious but one... Are you suggesting that religious arguments are not rational? No, absolutely not. I'm saying... Are they? When Joel? Would a religious argument be a rational yeah. argument? Well, yeah. if you're willing to express it in a public forum and listen to opponents uh, present their arguments. Particularly in issues of faith, which is why we have a separation of, of church yeah, and state. Because our state cannot decide what's rational and irrational in terms of a, uh, an issue of faith. But what's very important is that we keep the two things separate. And when you start saying that one person's religious view should have more weight than another person's religious view, right. then you're violating our Constitution. Right. I totally agree. The gay and lesbian community do not accept the idea that a gay marriage could be a civil union. 
that they don't want it to be a civil union. Is that the gay community expects to be given all of the rights of marriage. Yes. And right now, in our society, marriage is a civil right. We are not interested in trying to... We do to not have a religious French. concept of a religious marriage in the United States. Okay. All right, so that's the problem. we got to have yeah. a... If you simply had a religious marriage and a, se a secular marriage, then it would not be an issue, would it? that people confuse that. And what the gay community is seeking to do is have the same access to the civil right of marriage. They are not seeking to force any religious group to accept them or to accept their marriage. Because they're defining civil marriage as a separate but equal. See what I'm trying to say? Uh, well, exactly. But how but, can it be separate but equal if you have two marriages? If you're in Russia and you have a secular marriage but you're not and a religious Russia. marriage in this or country, China. one marriage. And that is a civil marriage. There's a, there's no religious marriage in this country at this Not point. under law. Not under law. I didn't know that. Did you, Joe? Well, I, I thought there was some kind of connection, such as that you couldn't have the religious unless you first got the marriage papers from the government, something like that. How does that work? Um, that what what the law allows is certain religious groups, their ministers or priests or rabbis can perform the ceremonies and the state recognizes that performance. As a secular ceremony. As a, as a secular civil ceremony. As a secular right. As a secular right. Not so as a ceremony. Is, we advocate the idea of a secular and, and a religious um, ceremony being this, uh, two two options, or that everybody had to have a secular and... Nobody is opposing that. I thought they were, you said their gay and lesbian community was against that because they didn't want to be separate but equal. It is not the same right as a marriage. And what you're confusing is that when, when a person gets married in this state, it is a civil right. Correct. A civil union is not the same thing. Oh. Meaning, do you know what it means? Well, I don't know. To me, it meant. It's to me, it meant. To me, it meant. Uh, you get married in a civil ceremony, or you have a, a, a civil ceremony, what not a religious ceremony. What do you call what you and your wife? So, what do you call your are, are marriage? You marriage. Okay. <laughs> so, my client. That's. No, but why you only you understand. Q E D. Why couldn't you just call <laughs> civil marriage and religious marriage and say the state? You have to have a civil marriage for every. Want to have a secular, a religious marriage? After that, can have it. Why? What's the problem with that? Well, that's what you can do right now. No, I thought you said. I'm not trying. But I thought you said that you could not. That it would not be an equal marriage if you could not. If it's not what it's you not just said. Marriage. The word marriage is the issue. Well, the well, word that's in the law. The, the civil union has no meaning. All right, I understand. One other. Okay. What would be the economic consequences of gay and lesbian marriage in the? Uh, the government paying taxes or taxation or anything like that. Is there any economic, if just purely economic reasons why the government would be against the concept of uh, gay and More tax revenue. Actually, the Households. economic analysis that has been done, uh, it, it appears that it would be a benefit. Tax as opposed benefit to the government, right. economic benefit? Uh, and, and, and part of that is because people who are now receiving uh, benefits if they were married and their marriage was recognized, they might not be receiving benefits. Well, what, well, There's a detriment to getting married. In other words, I don't think the two groups are coming out and saying, let's have a civil civil marriage and a religious marriage. The religions are responsible for the religious marriages and the state is responsible for the civil marriages. Why can't because they just... I, what I'm saying is, is there is a civil institution of marriage and I don't know, I've said it as many times we'll as I know We'll play back the tape for Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't but why can't they just change it? Why can't they just say... There's two. If they could make them equal, but you cannot create separate but equal. All right. All right. <laughs> Let no one divide asunder. What da 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 da. All right. No Thank one you. Uh, gotta, the the opinions and comments expressed on the professors <laughs> are not necessarily those of the staff or management of the University of New Haven or, or of WNHU or, or David David Morris. Morris or or Marx or. Maureen Murphy. <laughs> 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 Alright, if we take you and this and put it on cable access. Sure.